because of wisdom. Yeah. And I've been taught that Jesus has got wisdom. Amen. And so when we seek him, then we get all that favor that the Bible promises when we seek after wisdom. Amen. And you know, the Bible tells us if you seek, you will find. Amen. Amen. Knock the door will be open, seek, you will find. And so because you have hearts that seek after him, all of those promises in Proverbs are for you. Amen. And I'm only going to do a couple because my beloved has a wonderful message prepared for you. Yeah. And this is just to wet your whistle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, God, God just loves this congregation so much. And he is saying to you tonight that those those gifts that he's showering on you of wisdom, he's enabling you at the same time to take those words to others everywhere that you walk. Yeah. And I know that you know that. And I want to give you a new boldness for sharing that because as our days grow shorter and shorter towards the end of times when Jesus comes back, then, you know, we need to be bolder and bolder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So... One of the things that I want to share, just really quickly, is that he tells us to treasure wisdom and to acquire it. That's Proverbs 2, verse 1. Train your heart to listen when I speak and open your spirit wide to expand your discernment. And that's one of those things that when we speak after his word, that's what we get. Amen. And in verse, uh, Proverbs 3, verse 3, Hold on to loyal love and don't let go. Let your life be shaped by integrity. That's how you will find favor with God and men. Amen. Amen. So all that honor and favor is yours. Wisdom will exalt you when you exalt her truth. This is Proverbs 4, 8. She will lead you to honor and favor when you live by her insights. So you guys, you walk with honor and you walk with favor in the kingdom of God. Amen. There are people who are standing on those streets of gold who are cheering because of what you do here on earth. Because you walk with that. Amen. You have that blessing upon your life, that favor. And lastly, I have one more here. Okay, Proverbs 8 tells us that wisdom is personified. Lady wisdom is a figure of speech which represents God, and he invites us to receive the best way to live, excellently and nobly. It's the life found in Jesus Christ. Jesus is wisdom personified. He was anointed with the spirit of wisdom, and because we have him inside of us, we carry that same wisdom. Amen. He says, if we listen to him, we will be prudent and wise. Amen. We will receive revelation knowledge. So don't ever think that you don't know much because you haven't been to Bible school or because you're not a preacher. You have the wisdom of God living inside of you. Amen. From Jesus. And so I'm going to turn this over to my beloved. He has a wonderful word to share with you.
does or does to you, they can't take it away from you. Amen. You just know it. You know it, you've experienced it, and you, in the deepest parts of your being, you've experienced it in a new way and it's transformed you. Amen. And uh, that's, that's the truth that we reside on, that's the truth that, we, that comes in the Bible, that's the truth that comes from the Bible, uh, but there's also truth that comes from the world. And it actually can be deceptive. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. Um, and, um, but we want to stand upon the rock. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. Uh, um, do you have those uh, little, um, sorry, what's her name over here? Rose. Rose? Rose. Would you mind uh, putting up that picture or are you going to do it? Or? No, it's not. Okay. And maybe we turn this. Light off. Yes. Might be able to see that. That'll be better. Um, you got the lights behind you, there, so you can see. Yeah, I'm good. It won't be forever. Okay. So. Did I do it? No, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> So the truth is like a rock, okay? There it goes. Rock you stand on, right? Yeah, no, you had it. Okay. That was right the first time. Yeah. You had it. Okay. There. There. You there. there. Yeah. Right there. All right. So the truth is the truth. You can kick on it if you want, but nonetheless, it's still the truth. Yeah. Right? Take the next one. <coughs> You can try to hide from the truth, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it's not the truth. Mm -hmm. Next one. You can deny it. Next one. You can reject it. You can act like it's not even there. And next one. You can even try to dodge the truth. Oh. Well, yeah. Yeah. And next one. You can push against it and try to move the truth. But the truth is the truth. God's truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. It's not going to move. No matter if you deny it, you kick against it, you try to hide from it, you try to escape, dodge it, it don't matter. That's right. It's Amen. still the truth. Amen. Okay? Amen. And the next one. You can bang your head against it, huh? <laughs> How many times have you done? Have anybody done that? <laughs> One time. Okay, not the only one? Okay. It's your choice. That's right. God has given you the free free choice, free option to either embrace the truth. Go ahead to the next one. Embrace the truth. The next one. You can stand on it. The next one. You can trust it. The next one. One more. You can hold. Yep, you can rest on it. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. And that's what God can okay, that's good. And oh wait, one more, one more. Because even though, oh sorry. Oh well, that's good enough. <laughs> even though God's truth is hard sometimes. It's hard. It's hard sometimes to follow the truth. But nonetheless, no matter what it is, the truth actually brings life out of it. Out of the middle of truth is life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, thank you. Now, that wasn't the word I was given for you guys tonight. We're going to go to 1 Peter 4. And talk about the truth. Amen. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want. I'm good. Yes, you are. Okay, so uh, when I was, I prayed, asked God, I said, what do you want me to talk about? And usually I do this. This is a, I'll just tell you about my life. Usually God talks to me when I'm not doing anything else. Mm -hmm. I don't have a distraction. I'm not trying to trying to do find something. 
I just let go and let God. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, God often does this. I usually take a nap on Sundays sometimes. I get to do that. <laughs> and this Sunday I asked God, I said, well, what, what, what do you want me to speak about? And so I took a nap and woke up, and this, and this scripture that he gave me was the first thing that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go there yet, because i got to go somewhere else first. But we're still in 1 Peter, and we're going to start at 7. Four. Because while I was studying, huh? 4, 7. Yeah, amen. Yeah. When I said something else? Okay. Or seven, because while I was studying, usually when give me a scripture, I want to find out what you know. Usually, my uh, what I've been taught is you you first look at the scripture before it, you look afterwards, you, then you go to the first chapter, the chapter before it, the chapter after it, kind of get the whole Amen. glimpse of what's going on here. And this book, Peter, is about. The gen he's talking to Gentiles. He's not talking to Jews. So he's talking to me and you. Okay? That's what this is about. He's talking to the church. And in 7 it says, But the end of all things, underline that, all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. Mm -hmm. And that word serious is right mind. Mm -hmm. And that mind, that right mind, is the same mind that the de uh, demoniac had after Christ removed all the evil from him. Amen. Okay? Amen. So that's the right mind that we're talking about. So, so the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be of right mind and watchful in your prayers. And then in 8, it says, Above all things, have fervent love for one another. Amen. For love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. And that fervent love means a hot, burning, glowing love. Mm -hmm. That's for each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because Amen. if if we have a hot, burning love towards one another, they're going to see. People are going to see. Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants us to be, right? He wants Amen. us to be a light. On set on a hill, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's God's desire for us. Okay, let's go down to 11 first. If anyone speaks, let him speak as oracles of God. If anyone speaks, is that you? Hallelujah, yes. Is yes. that me? Yes. yes. That's anyone, right? Yes. Amen. Amen. So anyone, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. And the oracles of God is the utterances of God. Amen. So that's how God wants us to speak. Amen. If anyone ministers, it is to him to do with the ability which God supplies that in all things... God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Yes. So, at the end of all things, above all things, and in all things, is God's desire to be us to be glorified through Jesus Christ. Yes. And now let's go back to 10. And it says, as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And that steward, in this, in this sense, is the strengthening and the encouragement of fellow believers. Hallelujah. So that is the, where I'm coming from. Okay? From the encouragement and the edification of all believers. Okay? Amen. All right. So that's kind of what I learned while I was studying this scripture he gave me for you guys. And this is the scripture he gave me. That no longer should we live the rest of our time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Good Amen. word. Amen. Amen. And at first, I, when, I, when I first read that, I was like, oh, man. I mean, that's pretty harsh. 
That's pretty true. That's truth that's hard. Because it's about sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's about suffering. Mm -hmm. It's about setting aside our will. Amen. Setting aside our flesh. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know about you, but that's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes more than others. Mm -hmm. You know? I know that um, when I was thinking about this today, uh, two things came up. One of them was when Abraham Isaac uh, sacrificed Isaac. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. That's sacrificing somebody else's, but you, that's his blood. Mm -hmm. That's his flesh and blood. And that's exactly what God is asking us to sacrifice, mm -hmm. is our flesh and blood. Amen. And then I thought of when Jesus died. You know, not only did he sacrifice his son, was selfless, but God allowed that to happen too. But God is showing us that it's okay to sacrifice Amen. for the good. Yes. Because as if Abraham wouldn't have, uh, I mean, uh, wouldn't sacrifice Isaac, there was um, a blessing that came out of that. The 12 tribes of Israel came out yes. of that. And look what happened when Jesus followed God's plan, not his plan. Amen. That he got the keys back from the enemy. Mm -hmm. He gave us strength to endure. Yes. He gave us power to overcome. Hallelujah. He gave us uh, the mind of Christ. And that's, that's that right mind. Amen. That, that mind that was set free from all demons. Amen. You know? That's powerful. Amen. That's a powerful mind. And, and Jesus even said that we could have the mind of Christ. Yes. Right? Paul said that. And that's kind of the whole setup for that flesh. I wanted to read it in, uh, in, a, in a few other translations. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that, uh, um, what do they call it? Uh, media? No, not media. The internet. The internet. <laughs> oh, uh oh. I lost it. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is. Uh, I read out of the New, New King James, which is that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Amen. And the Amplified, it says, you might want to get your, the message out, man. Would you mind? I love that? the message Bible. So, and this is the Amplified, so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living for human appetites and desires. Mm -hmm. But lives for the will and the purpose of God. Amen. Amen. I like that one a lot. Uh, I'm not even King James, man. So, do you want me to read the message? Sure. And on um, verse 2? Is that where you are? Uh -huh. Okay, so it combines it with one. Okay. It says, Think of your sufferings as a weaning from that old sinful habit of always expecting to get your own way, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to live out your days free to pursue what God wants Amen. instead of being tyrannized by what you want. Mm -hmm. And then, do you want me to read it in the Passion Translation? That was, read. That was the message. Okay, sure. My new favorite is the Passion Translation. So live the rest of your earthly life no longer concerned with human desires, but consumed with what brings pleasure to God. Amen. 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 And the NIV says, as a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm not. <laughs> I didn't get I didn't get the verses um, or uh, the chapters. First First Peter 4 2. Peter 4 2. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
So as I was just con pondering this verse and over my life, and I'm I'm talking to myself <laughs> in this. I'm not preaching at you. I'm because I'm learning this too. Amen. You know, I'm experiencing that struggle between flesh and the spirit. You know, I, I and sometimes you don't even know that you're in the flesh because of. You know, it's kind of like that proverbial frog that gets put in the pot of cold water and then they heat it up. That's kind of what our life is like sometimes. Yes. Because there's so much going on around us. There's so much media happening, whether it's presidential or electional or, or our neighbors or, you know, there's so many distractions. That's right. There's so many things that can um, uh, not only distract us, but... Uh, cause anxieties yes. or burdens or worries but God has a solution that for that he says cast all your cares cast all your anxieties all your worries all your concerns all your issues cast them on him because he cares for you Amen. he's the one that wants to deal with that anxiety that worry that concern yes that's why he says that because he can take care of it. Amen. Amen. It's our job to give it to him. And then sometimes, or we should leave it there, but sometimes we pick it back up. Mm -hmm. You know. But that's why John the Baptist said, Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. It's right here. Amen. You know? And Jesus even said that. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he said, go and, and tell just what Jesus told the disciples to go and tell them to repent for the kingdom of God is in Because it's right here. And all we have to do is repent. Amen. It's really easy. And not that I do it all the time. Because sometimes I don't even realize that I'm in that boiling pot of water. Sometimes you don't know that you're in the midst of something until you get out of it. And that's why God calls us to separate ourselves. Amen. To separate ourselves from the things of this world. Come away, just like Jesus did, went out into the desert. That's where he got his power. Mm -hmm. That's where he got his resources, was by spending time alone with God. Amen. That's where we get our strength. That's where we get our endurance. That's where we get our love. Because... That's what Jesus did. That's what yes. Jesus taught us how to do. That's what he tells us to do. That's what he wants us to do. And even I remember uh, just thinking about this stuff that Paul even says, I beseech you, brothers. That is the urgency of mm -hmm. urgency of all urgencies. Mm -hmm. To present your body as living yeah. sacrifices. Yeah. Holy yes. and pleasing and acceptable. <laughs> Sorry. It's not funny. Oh, and I'm yeah. And hopefully you're that learning that too. Yes. And that's why I'm here here is to encourage you to do that. Mm -hmm. To present yourself as a living sacrifice. Because God uses that. Mm -hmm. When you sacrifice, when you lay down your will, your plans, your desires, and separate yourself from the things of this world and the cares of this world, you get the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You do. And he Amen. wants to give them to you. He, he so wants to give them to you. He made a way. You know that song? Amen. You made a way for me. Amen. To enter the from the things of this world, from the distractions, from the things that tempt us. And it's like I said, sometimes we don't even know. Terry and I went on a, uh, we had a three-day cruise that we got for free for somehow, somehow but um, we went on this cruise and we met this uh, guy who was a, whatever he is. Chef. Oh? Chef. 
No, no, no. No, a different guy. Yeah. Oh, guy. the personal trainer? Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. We met this personal trainer on the gym. We went to the gym and did exercise and that kind of thing. And, and because of that, God was already talking to us about separating ourselves from food that was damaging to our body. I didn't even know. 